Hallelujah to the Lord of heaven and earth. 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 Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord God Almighty. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord God Almighty. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord God Almighty. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord God Almighty. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Glory, glory, glory to God. Good morning, good morning, Kingdom citizens. How are you all doing? My eyes are still trying to wake up this morning. And uh, for some reason, on my end, my phone looks kind of foggy a little bit. But it's all good, right? Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is Dive Into The Word, a daily Bible reading where we are getting into the words of God every single day. We are in Genesis 29 and 30. And then we'll read Matthew 9, starting with verse 14 to 38. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, Jehovah God, Abba Father, creator of heaven and earth, we come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We glorify you and we thank you, Lord God Almighty, for waking us up this morning. We thank you, Lord God, for getting us on our way, ordering our steps. And we, I just pray for every single person that comes on this live, that watches the replay, every person that is a part of the body of Christ, Lord God. I pray that you increase us as we get into the word, increase us in knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, and give us an understanding of the purpose and the plan for our lives, Lord God. Give us an understanding of your will for our life, Lord God. Give us the energy and the strength to walk it, to walk in ministry, to walk in labor in you, Lord. Do not let us waver. Do not let us fall. Do not let us faint, Lord God. And I just pray and glorify you and thank you for your healing hands, your healing power, your healing spirit, Lord God. And I glorify you. We glorify you. and We thank you, Lord God. And we pray this in the presence of Jehovah and the spirit of Jesus, Yahweh. In Jesus' holy, mighty name. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning, kingdom citizens. I am still trying to wake up. So. This is raw and uncut TV, right? <laughs> raw and uncut TV. All right, so let's go to Genesis 29. Even my voice is still trying to wake up. All right, so Genesis 29, it says, Then Jacob went on his journey and came into the land of the people of the east. And he looked, and behold, a well in the field. And lo, there were three flocks of sheep lying by it. 
for out of that well they watered the flocks. And a great stone was upon the well's mouth. And thither were all the flocks gathered, and they rolled the stone from the well's mouth and watered the sheep, and put the stone again upon the well's mouth in his place. Excuse me. And Jacob said unto them, My brethren, whence be ye? And they said, Of Haran are we. And he said unto them, Know ye Laban, the son of Nahar? And they said, We know him. And he said unto them, Is he well? And they said, He is well. And behold, Rachel, his daughter, cometh with the sheep. And he said, Lo, it is yet high day, neither is it time that the cattle should be gathered together. Water ye the sheep, and go and feed them. And they said, We cannot until all the flocks be gathered together, until they roll the stone from the well's mouth. Then we water the sheep. And while he yet spake with them, Rachel came with her father's sheep, for she kept them. And it came to pass when Jacob saw Rachel, the daughter of Laban, his mother's brother, and the sheep of Laban, his mother's brother, that Jacob went near and rolled the stone from the well's mouth and watered the flock of Laban, his mother's brother. And Jacob kissed Rachel and lifted up his voice and wept. And Jacob told Rachel that he was his, he was her father's brother and that he was Rebekah's son. And she ran and told her father. And it came to pass when Laban heard the tidings of Jacob, his sister's son, that he ran to meet him and embraced him and kissed him and brought him to his house. And he told Laban all these things. And Laban said to him, Surely thou art my bone and my flesh. And he abode with him the space of a month. And Laban said unto Jacob, Because thou art my brother, shouldest thou therefore serve me for naught? Tell me. What shall thy wages be? And Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah was tender-eyed, but Rachel was beautiful and well-favored. And Jacob loved Rachel and said, I will serve thee seven years for Rachel, thy younger daughter. And Laban said, It is better that I give her to thee than that I should give her to another man abide with me. And Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed unto him but a few days for the love he had to her. And Jacob said unto Laban, Give me my wife, for my days are fulfilled, that I may go in unto her. And Laban gathered together all the men of the place and made a feast. And it came to pass in the evening that he took Leah his daughter and brought her to him. And he went in unto her. And Laban gave unto his daughter Leah, Zilpha, his maid, for a handmaid. And it came to pass that in the morning, behold, it was Leah. And he said to Laban, What is this thou hast done unto me? Did not I serve with thee for Rachel? Wherefore then hast thou beguiled me? And Laban said, it must not be so done in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. Fulfill her week, and we will give thee this also for the service which thou serve with me yet seven other years. And Jacob did so and fulfilled her week. And he gave him Rachel, his daughter, to wife also. And Laban gave to Rachel, his daughter, Bil Bilhah, his handmaid, to be her maid. And he went in also unto Rachel, and he loved also Rachel more than Leah, and served with him yet seven other years. And when the Lord saw that Leah was hated, he opened her womb, but Rachel was barren. And Leah conceived and bare a son, and she called his name Reuben. For she said, Surely the Lord hath looked upon my affliction. Now therefore my husband will love me. And she conceived again and bare a son and said, because the Lord hath heard that I was hated, he had therefore given me this son also. And she called his name Simon and she conceived again and bare a son 
and said, Now this time will my husband be joined unto me, because I have borne him three sons. Therefore was his name called Levi. And she conceived again and bare a son. And she said, Now will I praise the Lord. Therefore she called his name Judah and left bearing. Wow. And I, I'm looking at, I'm looking at like Jacob. I don't see it. I don't see that Jacob hated Leah. It's just that his intentions in the first place was for Rachel. You know, he, he came, he saw Rachel first when, when, when they were at the well. And so Jacob can't help who his heart fell in love with, you know? And so I don't think it was that he hated Rachel, you know, it's just that he worked seven years to be married to Rachel. And and the father is the one that tricked him and, and said, no, we need you to marry Leah first. At, why, why couldn't he have said that at the very beginning? <laughs> like, why couldn't he have said, no, Leah needs to be married first. Then you can get Rachel, you know? But that is what happened. So now, so now, uh, Leah has given him four sons and Rachel none. So any comments? Any any comments on 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 what we just read? All right, so Genesis thirty. <laughs> you know what, Beverly? That's good. That is good. I find it. Beverly says I find it interesting that the trickster got tricked. You know what? That's some good observation. That is some good observation. So all we so I guess we can say what what goes around comes around, right? You know, he reaped what he sowed, right? That's that's exactly <laughs> what that is. You know, that's some good observation. He reaped what he sowed. That is true. Oh, oh, excuse me. That's very true. All right. So Genesis 30. And see, I wouldn't have that. I wouldn't have put that. I wouldn't have put that together like that. I wouldn't have put that. So thank you for those good observation skills. <laughs> All right. So Genesis 30. And when Rachel saw that she bare Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister and said unto Jacob, Give me children or else I die. Uh, Beverly says, I find it even more interesting that the person who tricked him is the brother of his mom who orchestrated the event. Laban pronounced, oh, Laban continued the family history of deceit. Laban, Lay, Laban. Yes, that is true because it was Jacob's mom that, that, that taught Jacob to be a deceiver, um, to the, to his father. That is, that is true. That is very, very true. All 
All right, so, um, excuse me. So I'm going to read one again, um, Genesis 30. And when Rachel saw that she bare Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister and said unto Jacob, give me children or else I die. And Jacob's anger was kindled against Rachel. And he said, am I in God's stead? Who hath withheld from thee the fruit of thy of the womb? And she said, behold, my maid Bilhah go in unto her and she shall bear up on my knees that I may also have children by her. And she gave him <clears throat> Bilhah, her handmaid, to wife. And Jacob went in unto her. Um, this sounds familiar. <laughs> this 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 history repeating itself um with with Abraham's wife Sarah did the same thing. And then after that, she said, oops, my bad. You know, it's like history repeating itself over again. And we, we have that, we have that habit. As human beings, we repeat the mistakes over and over throughout the centuries. We repeat the mistakes over again. So here, here it is. Um, a history being repeated again. All right, so verse five. Excuse me. And Bil Bilhah conceived and bare Jacob a son. And Rachel said, God hath judged me and hath also heard my voice and hath given me a son. Therefore, called she his name Dan. And Bilhah, Rachel's maid, conceived again and bare Jacob a second son. And Rachel said, With great wrestlings have I wrestled with my sister, and I have prevailed. And she called his name Naphtali. When Leah saw that she had left bearing, she took Zilpah, her maid, and gave her Jacob to wife. Why? <laughs> and Zilpah, Leah's maid, bare Jacob a son. And Leah said, a troop cometh, and she called his name Gad. And Zilpah, Leah's maid, bare Jacob a second son. And Leah said, happy am I, for the daughters will call me blessed. And she called his name Asher. And Reuben went in and Reuben went in the days of wheat harvest and found mandrakes in the field and brought them unto his mother Leah. Then Rachel said to Leah, Give me, I pray thee, of thy son's mandrakes. And she said unto her, Is it a small matter that thou hast taken my husband, and wouldest thou take away my son's mandrakes also? And Rachel said, Therefore he shall lie with thee tonight for thy son's mandrakes. And Jacob came out of the field in the evening, and Leah went out to meet him and said, Thou must come in unto me, for surely I have hired thee with my son's mandrakes. And he lay with her that night. Man, this, this this too much going on is too much. <laughs> I'm like, what? So there's like this competition between Rachel and Leah, you know, uh, going on. And I'm still looking at the fact that, okay, I mean, this is, this is real life. And Rachel, even though she gave her handmaid to him to wife, she still didn't bear any children. Like I, I couldn't, I couldn't have been in that position. And and then they, and then and then Leah turns around 
because she can't bear any more. She's already had four sons. So she gives her handmaid. So it's like there's this competition going on between Leah and Rachel. And that's a lot of drama. <laughs> any comments? It, uh, Beverly says it. It again lets me know that Rachel, a man, see him that because she knew it had to be done, so she named him Jacob, which means trickster. Okay. <laughs> Ooh, but let's talk about this drama that's going on. This 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 thing that's going on between Leah and Rachel. So verse 17, excuse me, and God hearkened unto Leah and she conceived and bare Jacob, the fifth son. And Leah said, God have given me my hire because I have given my maiden to my husband. And she called his name Is Iscar, Is Iscar. And Leah conceived again. And bear Jacob the sixth son. And Leah said, God hath endued me with a good dowry. Now will my husband dwell with me because I have borne him six sons. And she called his name Zebulun. And afterwards she bare a daughter and called her name Dinah, Dina, Dina. Uh, Beverly says, it's the age old story of the pretty girl winning with not as much effort, but this battle didn't have to happen. This is all because their dad wanted to marry off the daughters in a certain order. Yeah, and it caused it, it caused uh, it, it caused uh, some um, strife between the sisters. It It, it really did. And, and 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 now there's drama in the house, you know. <laughs> there's drama in the house, and now I'm 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 looking at the fact that also, Leah, she didn't even have to give her handmaid, because she ends up bear she ends up giving him three more kids, so six sons and a daughter. Zeb Bu Zeb Bulan Got it. So I'm like that. That's a that's a lot of drama going on. So verse twenty two, and God remembered Rachel, and God hearkened to her and opened her womb, and she conceived and bare a son. And said, God hath taken away my reproach. And she called his name Joseph and said, the Lord shall add to me another son. And it came to pass when Rachel had born Joseph, that Jacob said unto Laban, send me away that I may go unto my own place and to my country. Give me my wives and my children for whom I have served thee, and let me go, for thou knowest my service, which I have done thee. And Laban said unto him, I pray thee, if I have found favor in thine eyes, tarry, for I have learned by experience that the Lord hath blessed me for thy sake. Yeah, you say it's because Rachel made it into a competition. Yeah. She sure did. She sure did. And 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 then and then Leah she turns around and says that you have taken my husband. It's like Leah don't even re it's like Leah don't even regard the fact that 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 Jacob didn't even want to marry her in the first place. He wanted to marry Rachel. 
that he got tricked. You know, they're not even they're not even looking at that. All right, so so Jacob is wanting to leave with his wives and children, but Laban is asking him to stay for a little while because he he noticed that he's being blessed because Jacob is around. And that's what verse 27 says. And Laban said unto him, I pray thee, if I have found favor in thine eyes, tarry. For I have learned by experience that the Lord hath blessed me for thy sake. And he said, appoint me thy rages, wages and I will give it. Uh, he, here Jacob understands his true worth. So um, verse 29. And he said unto him. Thou knowest how I have served thee and how thy cattle was with me. 30. For it was little which thou hast before I came, and it is now increased unto a multitude. And the Lord hath blessed thee since my coming. And now when shall I provide for my own house also? And he said, What shall I give thee? And Jacob said, Thou shalt not give me anything. If thou wilt do this thing for me, I will again feed and keep thy flock. I will pass through all thy flock today, removing from thence all the speckled and spotted cattle and all the brown cattle among the sheep and the spotted and speckled among the goats of the goats and of such shall be my hire. So shall my righteousness answer for me in time to come. When it shall come for my hire before thy face, everyone that is not speckled and spotted among the goats and brown among the sheep, that shall be counted stolen with me. And Laban said, Behold, I would it might be according to thy word. And he removed that day the he goats that were ring straight, ring straight and spotted. And all the she goats that were speckled and spotted and everyone that had some white in it and all the brown among the sheep and gave them into the hand of his sons. And he set three days journey between himself and Jacob and Jacob fed the rest of Laban's flocks. And Jacob took him rods of green poplar and of the hazel and chestnut tree and peeled white streaks in them and made the white appear which was in the rods and he set the rods which he had peeled before the flocks in the gutters in the water watering troughs when the flocks came to drink that they should conceive when they came to drink and the flocks conceived before the rods and brought forth cattle ring straight speckled and spotted And Jacob did separate the lambs and set the faces of the flocks toward the ring straight and all the brown in the flock of Laban. And he put his own flocks by themselves and put them not unto Laban's cattle. And it came to pass whensoever the stronger cattle did conceive that Jacob laid the rocks before the eyes of the cattle in the gutters that they might conceive among the rods. But when the cattle were feeble, he put them not in. So the feebler were Laban's and the stronger Jacob's. And the man increased exceedingly and had much cattle and maid servants and men servants and camels and asses. (laughs) So Jacob, Jacob knew how to, uh, Jacob knew how to gain, gain and increase cattle. He he knew how to. And so, you know, he, he tells Laban, listen, I have gained you cattle and all that. So, I you know, I need to be able to provide for my own house and, and be able to, uh, you know, 
uh, gain something for my own house. And so he knew how to, you know, get the stronger cattle and, and, and let Laban, Laban keep, you know, the weaker cattle. And there, and, and in a way, you know, he's he's doing what he does best, right? You know, um, and in some ways, I guess he trick trick Liban Liban when it came to the cattle and stuff. So, so any comments? So some of my commentary says Jacob began a six year effort to increase his wealth at at Laban's expense. During that time, he used at least three different techniques to make the flocks produce sheep and goats he could keep. He separated the strong animals from the weak, using only the strong ones for his breeding purposes. He set peeled branches in the watering troughs where the sheep bred, and he made the flocks face the street and dark sheep in Laban's flocks. Though the latter two practices have no scientific value, God himself and the angel of God caused Jacob to become very rich. So yes, Jacob, Jacob knew how to increase. He knew exactly what to do. So that way he can walk away with uh, great wealth. You know, he he had been work he had been working for Laban Laban all these years, and 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 being his servant first to get you know Rachel. Then he had to work another seven years for Rachel. So in order to get her as a wife and 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 then Laban as, and then they have chill all these children Jacob is ready to leave but Laban says can you stay a while like don't leave just yet because I am being blessed with your presence here I am being blessed mightily you know and so Jacob is like okay all right, well, I need to be able to, you know, gain wealth for my fa- for for my household, you know. So, any comments? If you are just coming on, good morning, Kingdom Citizen. We just got through reading Genesis 29 and 30. And uh uh we we're reading that there's a lot of drama going on in the household of Jacob right now. Um, but it's, it's a very, uh, interesting, uh, you know, how things are being done. Any comments, any, any comments? All right, so we're going to move on to Matthew 9, starting with verse 14. And we're going to finish off the chapter. So verses 14 through 38. And so in Matthew, we know that Matthew is the... the, uh, Uh, Jesus has started preaching and teaching in the synagogues and preaching, you know, out the multitudes, you know, teaching. And and we, 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 we learned that Jesus came with a whole new set of standards. Like he, he then came and preached and he's healing, uh, and, and he becomes famous throughout 
all the countries. And so that's that's where we, you know, we're reading about Jesus and um, and his teachings. And in and, and Matthew, when he was calling this, you know, the disciples. So that's 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 kind of pretty much a summary of what we've been reading in Matthew so far. So Matthew nine, verse 14. Says, then came to him, the disciples of John saying, why do we and the Pharisees fast off? But thy disciples fast not. And Jesus said unto them, Can the children of the bride chamber mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken from them, and then shall they fast. No man putteth a piece of new cloth unto an old garment, for that which is put in to fill it up taketh from the garment. And the rent is made worse. Neither do men put new wine into old bottles, else the bottles break, and the wine runneth out, and the bottles perish. But they put new wine into new bottles, and both are preserved. While he spake these things unto them, behold, there came a certain ruler. And worshipped him, saying, My daughter is even now dead, but come and lay thy hand upon her, and she shall live. And Jesus arose and followed him, and so did his disciples. And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood twelve years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, If I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. But Jesus turned him about. And when he saw her, he said, daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith had made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that hour. And when Jesus came into the ruler's house and saw the minstrels, minstrels, And the people making a noise, he said unto them, give place for the maid is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. But when the people were put forth, he went in and took her by the hand and the maid rose. And the fame hereof went abroad into all that land. And when Jesus departed thence, two blind men followed him, crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was come into the house, the blind man came to him and Jesus saith unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this? They said unto him, Yea, Lord. Then touched he their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. And their eyes were opened and Jesus straightly charged them, saying, See that no man know it. But they, when they were departed, spread abroad his fame in all that country. As they went out, behold, they brought to him a dumb man possessed with the devil. And when the devil was cast out, the dumb spake. And the multitudes marveled, saying, It was never so seen in Israel. But the Pharisees said, He casts out devils through the prince of the devils. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then saith he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. 
Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Wow. So Jesus, Jesus is, you know, he is doing the very thing that he tells us to do. He is shining bright. He says, shine, he says, let your light so shine before men so they may see your good work. And, and Jesus, Jesus is doing the very, the very words that he said. And so the fame of him is just spreading. And even when he tells them, don't go and tell no man, you know, they still go out and they're like, man, he, he did this for us. He did this for them. I mean, and they're just spreading, spreading the, the, what he is doing. Um, and so, you know, that when, when, when God is in it, the fame of you will go out. People will talk about you. People, people are going to spread your name and, and, and make, make it known, you know, when, when you, when you shine and you let that light shine, um, you know, get, get ready. When you obey the Lord God, get ready and know that, you know, you're going to be put on a platform to where people are going to know who you are. See time and harvest. Good morning. Good morning. Kingdom citizen, brother Hamilton. How are you doing? <laughs> but yeah. Um, Cause you know, later on he tells the disciples, everything that you see me do greater, greater, you're going to be able to do, you know, and and uh he he come he comes and he gives he gives you know when he comes in and lives inside you all that that Jesus was able to do when he comes in and he resides in this temple in your temple you, you, greater things are you able to do because of the power of God that fills you when you are filled with the holy spirit you know, and you're filled with with the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, and so you are going to be well known and you got to be ready for that. You know, you got to be ready for that. When you obey, he rewards you for sure. So any uh, any comments on what we just read? If you are just coming on, good morning, Kingdom Citizens. Um, today we read Genesis 29 and 30, and then Matthew 9, verses 14 through 38. So any comments, any comments? So you want to be ready for tomorrow? Today is Thursday, so tomorrow, Friday, is Testimony Friday. So on Fridays, we, we tell the any testimony, anything, any even if it's the smallest little thing, we give, we tell the testimonies of the goodness of what God is doing in our lives um, so we can praise and worship the Lord God together. Um on what God is doing in each other, in each other's life. And then also we are reading out of the K Arthur, how to study your Bible. So on Friday, I read us, you know, and we're going to get through the whole book eventually, but I'll read a small piece out of the Bible, out of this book. Um, K Arthur's how to study your Bible and I have been inspiring and encouraging you to look up words um, as we go throughout the week when we read that we look up words um, and that we use. We, we learned in the K. Arthur book observation that we have observed things that we have observed in the word during the week and uh 
we'll talk about words that we look up and, and, and look up the definition of uh, words during the week. So look up some words. We're going to we're going to learn how to study the word together. And so on Fridays, that's, you know, uh, we'll 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 do the reading of the word and then we'll discuss and talk about, you know, how how to study the Bible and, and look up words and things like that. So that's what's been added to the reading of the word every fr- on Fridays, every Friday. So definitely, definitely set your alarm. You want to come on uh, and um, um, share and invite others um, as we are getting into the reading of the word every morning. And Fridays, we kind of, you know, increase it a little bit, learning how to study the word because you don't want to just read it now. We won't. We want to. We want to actually dive in. So that's why it's, that's why the title is Dive Into the Word Now. Amen. So any comments? And I, I really want y'all to get, you know, to a place to where y'all can actually make comments, engage, and, um, and allow... You know, the, 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 the Holy Spirit is the teacher. We're the students and, and we're, you know, getting into the word and learning and increasing in knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Amen. All right. So no comments, no comments. You know that I love you. I love you all. Excuse me. I love you. Love you all. And uh, I hope and pray that you all have a wonderful, awesome, beautiful, blessed day on purpose. And I will see you 530 in the morning.